Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and open up to your questions. John, uh, Matt Milano today in the locker room uh, said he felt like the team lacked energy. Given what was at stake, how do you how do you think something like that is allowed to happen? Yeah, I just think overall, um, you know, we, you know, when you when you get into a rhythm, they they got into a rhythm pretty quickly offensively, and and we had a hard time getting them out of that rhythm. And then when you're on the field, um, and then offensively when you're not on the field and extending drives, it can affect the the energy a little bit. But I thought the guys came out with with the proper amount of energy. But when they're when they're in a rhythm offensively and you can't get off the field, that that's that can tend to to, to zap your energy a little bit. Um, but um, I thought the guys. I thought the guys' effort was there. We just we didn't do en do enough to win. John, how would you evaluate the line of scrimmage overall today? Yeah, you know, when you, you've heard me talk about this before, if you want to if you want to win games on a consistent basis, that's where the game starts. It's, it's there and it's at the quarterback position, and, and we didn't do enough. Uh, I would say overall at the line of scrimmage tonight, give the Bengals credit, um, uh, but uh, you probably saw what I saw. Hey, Sean. This, this, these players have embraced the expectations coming into the season throughout the season. What kind of result? What was sort of your message to them? Uh, keep their head up. You know, this is a tough league and it's a tough business that way. And you learn from things like this. Um, I'm, I'm proud of them, even though this this hurts. I'm proud of them in the way they handled themselves with class this year and, and the uh, and, and the ups and downs and the adversity that that they faced. Um, and I think they'll they'll take that with them. Um, but for right now, um, you know, this stings. And uh, I wish, wish it was a different result. Coach, there seemed to be like some unsure footing due to the conditions. Did your players on defense in particular feel they had to play more conservative at times because of the unsure nature of Yeah, no, I was, you know, no excuses, Chris. This, uh, they beat us. Um, and give credit to them, they beat us. Um, and, and they out-physicaled us. Coach, um, you know, Cincinnati has some good balance out there in the passing game and the run game. Uh, do you feel that they had a uh, feel for what you guys do defensively? No. Um, well, listen. I mean, everyone. We had a feel for them. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a surprise in terms of after that first really drive and a half. I thought we adjusted, knew knew what they were doing, um, without getting into the details on it for you here. But um, you know, we had a, had a hard time stopping it at the same time. And you know, the, the challenge with that offense is you commit to stopping the run, and then they've got three really good receivers that. Uh, one or one or tough one on one or tough matchups for you. So, um, you know, we, I thought we came in with a good game plan and we adjusted through it. And uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. Coach, are you uh, in concerns that the Super Bowl window might be closing after a season? No, no, no. This is a good football team, and you learn from things like this. You keep knocking on the door. Um, that's what you do. You stay, you stay steadfast in your in your focus and your approach. You, you work your tail off. Um, again, that's a good football team we just played, and they, they, they played better than we did tonight. They coached better than we did tonight. And, um, you know, we've got to learn from this and make the proper adjustments um, as we move forward. And um, but for staying in the moment tonight, I'm not, I don't want to get any evaluations and all that type of stuff, but, um, you know, obviously disappointing the result. John, you know Co that uh, Stefan is a very emotional guy. He was visibly frustrated on the sidelines, was very quick to, to leave tonight. Where do you think yeah. stay with him? Well, he's a member of the Buffalo Bills. I mean, um, he's a competitive guy, and uh, that's what makes him good. Is is what you saw. Is he's very competitive, like we all are. Um, we work extremely hard at these jobs to, to to be the best we can possibly be, and it hurts. And um, you know, I, uh, I wouldn't want a guy that it, it doesn't hurt, right? So um, he put it all on the line out there. We put it all on the line, and tonight it wasn't good enough. And uh, um, you know, that's that's the part that stings. Coach, when came downstairs, he was like halfway out of the tunnel, and I saw someone kind of bring him back in. And then I was told he left a short time late. Did you talk to him at all? Was was there some issue? After uh, I just the game? he was in there when I addressed the team, and and uh, that's what matters most. Hey, hey Sean, what do you sense um, this means with, with with Josh Allen? Just kind of how he handles this, what he has to do to, to kind of rebound this, because I know he wanted to have a better day. Yeah, I mean we all did, um, and you know Josh, I thought did some good things, and. Like we all, we, we all want some plays back as well. So, um, you know, sometimes we're trying to do too much overall. And, and um, you know, but it's, uh, you know, we all have to grow from this. And, 
you know, right now, just being in the moment, this is, this is, it stings, like I said. And Josh is a heck of a competitor, as you guys know. Um, but I'll take him any day of the week, man, on our football team. And um, I love how competitive he is. And, you know, these are things you've got to learn from. Uh, we have to make the adjustments, the proper adjustments we need to make so we can move this organization and continue to move it forward um, because that's the direction we're heading. Sean, all year, if you didn't win, you still found a way to make it tight. Every loss was yeah. close. Today, that didn't seem to be the case. Does it, does it matter at all? I mean, a loss in the last game, I know, we know what it means, but does it matter that you went out this way where it wasn't typical of the way you guys played? Yeah, um, it, the short answer is no, it doesn't matter. A loss is a loss, and, and your season ends. Um, the longer answer, and it will be a discussion for another day, is, is what – what, what happened and what we have to do to get it changed. Um, and that's part of the adjustments that I mentioned earlier is we've got to be able to adjust um, from that as a coaching staff and, and beyond, right? So um, that's what we have to do if, if we want to continue to knock, knock at this door and move beyond and where we were this year. I know it's probably too soon to give a detailed response, but just your impressions of the growth of the relationship between Josh Allen and Ken Dorsey this year, first time play caller with Josh, how, how did that relationship develop throughout the year and, and do you think it was a, a productive growth process? Well, I mean, we had two new play callers, both both uh, Ken and, and Matt Smiley, our special teams coordinators. So I thought, you know, anytime you go through your first year, you're going to you're gonna learn a lot. You're going to learn from the, the highs, you're going to learn from the lows. And uh, it's what you do with that, with those with that education as you move forward, that, that, that really defines who you are as a coach and, and who we then become as an offense in this case or, or a special teams unit uh, with, with Coach Smiley. So, um, you know, those, both of those two um, guys are, are, are you know, hard workers, and, and I know it's important to them. And um, I thought in a lot of ways they did a really good job, and I'm sure they'll look back and find some ways that they want to improve as well. So. You have another number of key players that could not be with you next year. How, how do you navigate those conversations in the locker room over the next few days, just knowing that some of those significant players might not be around in the future? Yeah, well, those, that's, the, that's the hard part of this business. Um, you know, I love every, every person in that locker room for, for what they went through this year and, and how much time they put into it. I know how important it was to everyone. And it, it's been a, I know we came up short tonight, but a total team effort. And that doesn't happen. You don't get this far without that being the case. Um, you know, that being said, that's a conversation for another for another day, and um, you know, we'll see where it goes. Sean, the season is so unprecedented in so many ways, especially concentrated towards the end of the season. So I don't know if you, you have a guess, I guess, to answer this question, but how do you sense the decompression is going to be for this team, given all the expectations and the hopes and then all of the emotions that have happened here in the last four or five weeks? Well, I mean, like I said before, you work your tail off all season long. You work in the off season um, every day as hard as you can um, to be the best that you can. And um, there's only one team, and we wanted it to be our team, and that's what hurts the most. And when you don't when you don't perform uh, up to your expectations internally, um, that hurts. And uh, you know, you just but as a competitor. You're only really left with one choice, and that is to pull your pull yourself together uh, in due time and uh, and find a way to get it done. And that's that's what we're steadfast. And that's that, that'll be the vision as we move forward here. So um, the goal hasn't changed and won't change for this organization. Um, and we got to continue to do everything we can to get there. And that's the goal. Might it be easier with the context of all the things that happen to find a little more satisfaction quicker in this off season? than in quote-unquote normal seasons of the things that you're proud of and all the things that you did accomplish? I'm most proud of the fact that the guys, the players, as young men, will take the lessons that they learned from this season and the adversity that they face. I think they'll take that with them through their lives as men. And I think that's, that's what um, – I think that's a, that's a byproduct of the season. The goal, though, is still to – to make it to and win the Super Bowl. So um, just kind of staying in, in buckets here, that, that's, that's what stings the most. And, um, but, the, but the sport does teach you lessons as, as a person, and I think they'll take that with them for sure. John, I suppose this relates to Tim's question, but 
Damar's presence here was an important part of the story. I know he interacted with your team in the locker room. What, what did that mean? What was said? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, just generally speaking, um, out of respect for, for the environment in there, um, you know, DeMar's, DeMar was in the locker room pregame, and, and uh, you know, his, his, um, just him being in the locker room, his presence, I think, was good for the guys and, and also hopefully good for him. Um, and I thought it was a pretty cool moment. Um, the game wasn't trending the way we wanted it to, but when they put him on the big screen, and, and uh, just a great moment, keeping perspective, of course, on where he was just a few weeks ago. Um, so... Super happy for him and, and thankful uh, that his health is returning. And I know he's, you know, he'll continue to take it one day at a time. Hey, Sean, early on in the fourth quarter, you were deep in your own zone. You decided to punt on fourth down. What went into that decision? Yeah, just we had, um, without getting into strategy, had something dialed up there. Didn't, they didn't give us the look that we wanted um, and uh, got called off So um, on the fourth down situation. So we were going to look to be, I guess, moderately aggressive right there, but didn't also want to end the game right then and there, either down 14, felt like um, still wanted to give us a chance. Um, you know, thought we could give ourselves a chance if it didn't get called and didn't get executed, but had something dialed up there and um, just didn't get the look we were looking for. And, and then, uh, you know, um, just we just offensively weren't on the field long enough. Getting into a rhythm, uh, they affected the quarterback and, and we didn't affect their quarterback. And I think when you look at it in simple terms, that's, uh, that's what the game boils down to most of the time is is when you can affect the the opponent's quarterback and, and they can affect your quarterback and um, you know I think that's uh, that's what was going on a lot tonight. You mentioned not affecting the quarterback enough. Do you feel like you just didn't get enough, especially maybe from some of those young defensive linemen that you guys have been developing the last couple of years? Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to point it to just one deal. Um, you know, you can start with me if you want to if you want to look anywhere. Just start with me. Um, but overall, you got to be able to get pressure um, and affect the quarterback with four. And I didn't think we did enough tonight overall and give them credit. And they, they did some good things and then flip it over to their side. They were affecting the quarterback at times with four. Um, but again, that's that's something we're going to need to look at as we move forward here. Sean, outside of a handful of plays a couple of weeks ago, this is the first time you've gotten a chance to go against Joe Burrow on the field. I mean, watch tape of him, I'm sure. But what did you see from him and, and how good is he? He's a good quarterback. Um, again, to your point, you know, first real exposure to him over, over a true game here, and um, he's smart, um, and uh, he got the ball out of his hands at time and, and dumped the ball down to the to the back out of the backfield and checked the ball down and um, stay, kept them on schedule. I thought that was good, and there was times where he held it and, and got the ball down the field. So um, they do a good job. He's extremely smart. Um, does a good job staying on schedule and. Um, you know, they've got some pretty good weapons around them with, with those three guys in the back out of the backfield. And so, um, again, give them credit. And, uh, you know, we'll, again, have to continue to, to work on our, our side of things. Sean, I know you don't like to make excuses all that often, but is there anything to just the cumulative effect of exhaustion of all the things you've gone through getting to this moment and being somewhat drained? Yeah, no. No, this is what we work for. I've told, I told you guys that. I mentioned it the last couple of weeks. I appreciate where you're coming from that, that Joe, but um, this is what you work so hard for all off season, all season to get into the playoffs and, and, and to make a push and, and get to the Super Bowl and win it. Um, so there's no second place trophies. Um, you do learn valuable lessons from, from this experience and, uh, and you, put your, you put your head down and go back to work.